Hi everyone, welcome to another In Focus video where today we're going to be looking at one of our espresso coffees. Uh, so far we've just focused on the filter coffees that we're roasting at the moment, um, but here we are in Viner Street uh, where we assess the quality of our espresso roasts, um, find it's not really appropriate to cup those to check the roast quality or brew them as filter coffee, you need to make them as espresso to really get the results that are intended by how we roast them. So today we're going to look at a coffee called Mita del Mundo, which translates to middle of the world, uh, which kind of gives away where it's from, which is Ecuador. Um, Ecuador doesn't produce a whole lot of coffee. It's uh, got a bit of a peppered past with specialty coffee production. They grow a lot of Robusta. They make some instant coffee. But there are some really, really great um, Arabica varieties being grown uh, across different regions in the country. We, we, we definitely feel like there is a sort of northern profile and a southern profile. Coffee's in the north. Uh, especially when they're of the typical Mejorado variety, can be incredibly floral, very clean, very elegant. Whereas coffees in the south can be a bit richer and more uh, chocolatey and more like cooked fruits uh, in the cup profile. So last year we bought our first ever lot that was intended to be roasted for espresso from the Mita del Mundo uh, community blend. And it's from about 30 farmers or so. And we've managed to secure a similar lot this year. Um, it was the first time we'd roasted uh, coffee from Ecuador for espresso. And I feel like from the South profiles, you really get to amplify all of that positive um, positive flavor, flavor notes in that it's chocolatey and jammy. And when you brew espresso with coffee like that, you really concentrate those traits. Uh, so it's a really suitable um, cup profile to, to brew as espresso. So this year, uh, the coffee is a combination of Catura, Tipica and Bourbon. Again, from about 30 farmers or so around the city of Loja, which is in the South of Ecuador. Uh, near to an area called Zamora, where we visited the cupping lab to actually cup through different samples and make some selections. It still feels like a relatively new origin for us, Ecuador, but we have been buying and roasting coffees from about the last five seasons. Uh, but we just feel like we're getting to know uh, what to expect from different areas a little bit more. Um, so Mita del Mundo uh, washed uh, Catura, Tipica and Bourbon from about 30 farmers. It's quite high uh, elevation coffee from 1600 to 2100 meters. Um, and it's traditionally processed where the, the coffee is depulped uh, and then the mucilage covered seeds are fermented in cement tanks for anywhere between about 15 and 24 hours. It, it depends on the, on the farmer's own climatic conditions. And part of how they choose to process the coffee will be dependent on the advice given to them by Caravella. That's the um, exporting partner that we're working with in Ecuador. And it's really impressive to travel with them uh, in, the, in the countries they work because you're typically going to be traveling with um, a sales representative, but also a PECA representative. And PECA is their education program on the ground. You, you see a lot of advice being given for how to prune and how to tend for the trees in the field to make sure that they're maximizing the amount of fruit produced, but also the quality of the fruit produced. And then after it's picked, they might advise again on how to uh, ferment and process each batch. So the, the processing will vary ever so slightly from farm to farm, but typically it's fermented in cement tanks, fully washed um, and then dried on patios under shade. Um, and the shade is just going to sort of mitigate a little bit of the heat from the sun, uh, slow down the drying process a little bit and give it a little bit more control uh, over the product. So this was picked between September and October last year. We're right at the end of July, early August now, and it's still tasting incredibly fresh and incredibly complex. So it's holding its flavor really, really nicely. So... We're going to brew uh, the coffee as espresso and also make it uh, into a milk drink, like a cappuccino, to assess the roast. Because whenever we roast a coffee for espresso, we're, we're intending to create something that is a bit versatile. Um, and that versatility requires uh, an approach to roasting that creates something a bit softer and more malleable and easy to work with. So espresso roasting for us is, is, is a way to sort of create a very, very balanced and workable product. When we assess our roast quality, we typically use a house recipe. We don't tend to sort of dial into very different specs for each coffee because the goal is to create something workable and repeatable. I'm going to use 16 grams of coffee because I'm using a 15 gram ridgeless VST basket. It all sounds quite advanced, but what it basically means is the basket I'm using is straight sided and it's rated as carrying around 15 grams of coffee. Um, we're going to put 16 in and apply seven bars of pressure. Uh, from the espresso machine with water at 92 and a half degrees.
Okay, so that ran for 32 seconds and is 35 grams in the cup. So it's a fraction longer than I'd want and a fraction slower, which may cause a little bit of bitterness, but let's see. There's so much um, chocolatey aroma in this coffee when brewed as espresso. The, the most specific uh, term I can come up with is, is like cacao nibs. If you have a pack of those and they've got a little bit of that like fermented chocolate aroma to them, but very, very concentrated chocolate smell. It's not like a chocolate bar. It's more like the nibs. Um, it's really characterful and really, really intense. It's, it's, it's got a lot of red fruit uh, character to it as well, but particularly dried, almost like dried cranberry in the aroma. One thing that really stands out in Ecuadorian coffees, I find time and time again, is the mouthfeel. Some of the coffees have this almost gelatinous, jelly-like quality to them that are just really strange. It's, it's almost like there's pectin in there or something like a setting agent because they have a thickness and a viscosity. It's very, very strong in this uh, espresso as well. Very jammy and um, almost like bramble fruits, so blackberries or, or raspberries or, yeah, dark-skinned berries. Uh, very, very strong in the, in the espresso. It's one of those coffees where it's such a small espresso shot, you, you kind of want it to be bigger because it's very easy to drink. There's nothing um, dominating about it. It's not particularly bitter. It's not particularly acidic. It's very sweet, but it's just very, very balanced and easy to drink. I really want to brew it now and try it in a milk drink to see how that flavor profile stands out uh, in, a, in a milk drink of about six ounces or so. It's standing out very, very nicely. It, obviously, this is a relatively small milk drink size. You can see places, 12 ounce uh, milky drinks. And I don't know how well it would stand out there uh, with this small dose. I'd probably go for a very different espresso recipe for larger milk drinks. But for something this size, which is a sort of traditional cappuccino size, the espresso is working really nicely with the milk. That like chocolatey vibe is still standing out wonderfully. Very milk chocolatey, of course, um, but also very butterscotch-like. Um, that sweetness has just become almost like butterscotch or toffee. And the fruit is still there. It's it's almost like having fruit compote in, in something with dairy or cream on your on your berries or something like that. It's still standing out and still very present. Uh, it's not being dominated. Also, the coffee is very, very clean. Once you've had it, uh, you still get to taste the flavors, but it's a very, very clean, lingering finish. There's no sort of smoky or ashy flavors. There's no green, harsh flavors. It's just a very, very consistent, long, sweet finish in the cup which is really, really great. So that's the Mitad del Mundo Espresso from Ecuador, particularly Southern Ecuador near the city of Loja. Um, it's a community lot being uh, put together by about 30 or so coffee producing families, Tibico Catura and Bourbon, um, being grown with the help of uh, the advice of the PECA program from Caravella. And I think a, a, a testament to how great uh, Ecuadorian coffees can be. Um, we hope to have this in our range again year after year, um, as well as particular single farmer coffees from the north of the country. Um, and yeah, Ecuador for us is a super exciting country to, to keep visiting and keep buying coffee from. So thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you soon.